Okay, so now I will be demonstrating how to solve problem 3-81 in the textbook for homework 4. So we first know that there are these three forces located at the end point, f of x equals 0, f of y equals 175 pound force in the y direction, and then f of z equals 100 pound force in the z direction. So what's going to happen because they're located at the end point, we know that the critical stress is located at A. And it's going to create two moments, one my, which is negative, and then mz, which is positive. So first we're going to calculate my and mz. So my. So this is going to be negative 800 pound force inches. The lever arm is 8 inches since we have the 6 inches here, and then the 2 inches over here. And then next we're going to find mz. And then mz is going to be fy times the lever arm. And this is also 8 inches, so this is 1,400 pound force inches. Next we're going to calculate the resultant moment. So. basically a reinstatement of Pythagorean's theorem. So that resultant, when you create it, is uh, 1,612.45 pound-force inches. Next, we're going to calculate that the angle that this is located at. So this is going to be located at an angle of 29.74 degrees. We calculated that from the inverse tangent of uh, my over mz. So next we need to find the torque at A. So the torque at A is negative, and this is calculated to be negative 875 pound-force inches. So fine, we can calculate the bending stress that's acted at the cross-section at A. So this is calculated to be 16,424.28 PSI. In other words, that can be uh, rounded to 16.42 kPSI. So now, now that we have the bending stress at A, I'm going to flip over the page here. Now that we have the bending stress, now we need to calculate the torsional shear stress. So this is going to be tau xz. This can be negative 16t over pi d cubed. And since the torque is negative as well, so that's going to be 16 times 875 over pi times the diameter cubed, which is 1. This is calculated to be 4.456 kpsi.
Finally, we can calculate the transverse shear stress at A. So since it is a, a circular rod, this is going to be 4V over 3A. And then the shear stress at this, the shear force at this point is going to be 175. And then the area is pi over 4 times the diameter squared. And this is 297.1 PSI. So from this calculated value, 297.1 PSI compared to the bending stress and the torsional shear stress, we can see that this is a very low value. So in essence, this could be ignored. So we're going to put uh, transverse shear is very small compared to tau xz and sigma s. So can be neglected. So the transverse shear is very small compared to tau x, z, and sigma x, so it can be neglected. So finally, we're going to draw a, a stress element, uh, which is located in the uh, x, z plane for tau x, z, and sigma x. I'm going to start off with our square here. The sigma x is positive, and sigma x is 16.4. K PSI. And then the tau XZ acts in this direction. Tau XZ is 4.456 K PSI. So now we're going to draw diagrams of the torsional shear stress and the bending stress. So for the torsional shear stress acting at A, so at A, and then we're going to label this torsional stress. Now we're going to do the bending stress at A. So this is the, actually the bending stress due to MX and MY at A. So we're going to label bending stress at A, just in parentheses, MZ and MY. So now that we have these values, we can finally calculate the principal stresses. So the equation for... Uh, Sigma 1 and uh, Sigma 2. That's Sigma x over 2 plus or minus the square root of Sigma x over 2 squared plus tau x z squared. So now we can plug these in. So Sigma 1 comma Sigma 2 equals 16.42, and that's kpsi plus or minus 16.42 over 2 squared. And then tau xz is 4.456, so that's going to be squared. All under the square root. And from this, the maximum 
maximum principal stress, which is sigma 1. That's calculated to be 17.6 K P S I after plugging it into a calculator. And then sigma 2, which is going to be the minimum um, principal stress, and that's negative 1.13 KPSI. So this was the equation that we used to calculate the principal stresses after plugging it into the formula. And this is sigma 1 and sigma 2. So I'm going to go on to a new page here. So now we have enough information, we could also calculate the maximum shear stress. And the maximum shear stress is calculated by this equation. Tau max equals sigma x over 2 squared plus tau xz squared. So using this equation, and simply we can plug this in, so tau max. And then we already know that sigma x is 16.42 kpsi, 16.42 divided by 2 squared, that's still under the square root, plus 4.456 squared. And after plugging this in, that gives us a value of 9.43 kpsi. 9.43 kpsi. So using this equation to calculate tau max, and then plugging it into the equation, gives us 9.43 kpsi. So once again, Reiterating, we first started out with the diagram here. Then from these forces, we calculated the stresses at A. And then we found, and then since this is uh, has two components, MY and MZ, we found the resultant of these. That was to be 1,612.45 pound force inches. Then we calculated the angle at which this is applied. And that'd be at an angle of... Uh, 29.74 degrees. Then we uh, calculated that uh, TA, which is negative 875 pound force inches. From here, sigma x using the resultant stress. Sigma x due to bending is 6.42. And then we also found that tau xz was 4.456 kpsi. And from those two values, we calculated the principal stresses uh, did recently, and then we also ignored the uh, transverse shear stress since it was very low, and here was the uh, stress element.